Good afternoon. Welcome to the second race meet before the season end for local horse racing. Merry Christmas to all and the Open Gate Show hopes that 2024 will be a better year for you. Let me state once again, it's not who I select but it's what I say about other horses in the race. I can't select all of them. First race starts 12, sorry, 11.30 a.m., 10 races. And uh, it goes six furlongs or 1,200 meters, 10 declared. This race is named in the winner of the two-year-old stakes in, 20, in 2005, Rampage, trained by Richard Zan. A reasonable size, they call it very muscular. This race is for restricted allowance five, and about five years and up. And imported six years and up was only one twice. Also eligible are imported five years and up was only one once. So much condition. Anyway, number one line talk finished in front of all top contenders in this race when they met, except for number three, Great Brit, who was a late on starter for that race. That race was on the 9th of December, going five for long straight. A race where Lion Talk finished second, three and three quarter length to Big Ben Biden, and had three card guy and company behind. Six for now, but a fit horse, uh, that will be in the top four at least. The three great Brit came off a sudden and um, and well to run and was scratched for that intended start. Same race on the seven ninth that most here ran in. If okay, can win. So don't totally discount this mare as she has already competed against better in the recent, in, in last year. Number four, number five, she got guy, better by number six, Avenging Angel last time. Well, last two times they ran together. Number six, Avenging Angel, uh, rather switch from Natalie, female apprentice Natalie Berger, to Robert Halliday. Should say something as he was in front of number five, three card guy, number seven, my Smokey, and number eight, Tequila Blue, at 31 to 1, the last time this was run. Uh, look pencil for this race in, 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 in this holiday season where angels are aplenty and happy. Number seven, my Smokey. Last start was head on with number eight, Tequila Blue, for fifth spot. Ran too well three times before that race. So it has to be considered just thinking though that she prefers the straight or maybe a little bit shorter. Number eight, Tequila Blue, three of her last six starts were good. 11 to one last out could suggest she wasn't fully focused and uh, prefers this race, well, as this race in mind. Uh, but here this light might be the aim, as I just mentioned, for connections. Number nine, Jackson, change of stable to Ian Alexander, who normally has his horses well presented. Jackson could get a very low exotic slot. Number 10, Mayo, beat around many stables and back to her origin. Has the class to compete with these, but her well-being is questionable. Number, top three, number six, Avenger the Angel. Number one, Lion Talk. Number three, 
Great Britain. And a backup for third and fourth, which includes number five, three Code Guy, number seven, My Smokey, number eight, Tequila Blue, and number 10, Maya. The second race is named the Hikimi, winner of the 1993 two-year-old stakes race. Hikimi was trained by Will Willoughby Simpson at muscular chestnut leggy court who can run. That I can say. Well, he, he has to be to win the two-year-old stake race anyway. Five and a half furlongs or 1,100 meters. It's for children up. A claiming race, 600 to $750,000. Six declared. Number one, heroin. Sorry, hair of fire. Has changed table since last race. Looking in much better condition and visiting the chat more often of late. Uh, issue, which is only one if can be corrected, she will fight this out using her speed to try to make to go all the way. Number two, Lord of Agilon. This horse has been training a lot, even though lightly, yet have a lot to find on paper. In these claiming races, it's who are the physically soundest will occupy the board, the board placings accordingly. Number three, run with me. The Open Gate Show, Robert Rajiv Chachi rides. The Open Gate Show welcomed back veteran jockey Rajiv Chachi, who took his tack to Florida. He's an executive of the Jamaica Horseman Thoroughbred Foundation and a good rider at that. Anyway, it's rum time out there for the Christmas and punters want to go rumming on this horse but be careful how uh, this horse is as you have to have strong legs to stand up if you get drunk yes he can fight this out for a top three slot incidentally trainer of this horse, Eric Sobrati, has a lot to beat, has a lot of part to play in the JH, in the JTH as being an, also an, an executive member. Number four, Alexis Lodge. Recent to claim for a million dollars. And within nine days, it's quickly back down. Alexis Lodge was performing poorly for in the last six starts, which includes the million dollar one that, that will you to clean this horse out of. Quickly dropping. I'm also dropping off this horse. But if this horse can bring, I'm talking Alexis Lodge, can bring that form line in just before this, this, the, the, the summer and the latter part of last season, Alexis Lodge has a very good chance. Number five, turn on the light, raised more at a million dollar sale tag and uh, a few 750,000 tag as well. Her, all, her odds for most of her races are very high. And uh, well, he, she, she managed to win a race of the straight at good price. I think it was about 20 to 1. No, yeah, I think so. If he won this, but uh, trading on the exercise track, dairy different style. So she uh, could do well against the suspects. Number five, turn on the light. Number three, run with me. Number four, Alex Lodge. No, sorry. Number five, turn on the light. Number three, run with me. Number one, here, fire, dangerous mare. Number one, number four, Alexa Judge, another dangerous mare. Well, I shouldn't say that, but she can win. Number two, Lord of Ashland. I guess most people will be carrying five horses in this race for those who play the, uh, the role in exotics. Third race goes 1,100 meters or five and a half furlongs. It's named the Forceful Attack in 1987. Two-year-old stakes winner. 
George Thomas trained this horse, and this horse was a steel grey. Cold. Three hours and up, opportunity claim in $200,000 not eligible. Uh, well, it was earned. Well, not sorry, let me repeat. Three hours and up, optional claim in $200,000 was not earned $180,000 after August 26th. And nearly bred five years and up were maidens. Eight declared. I must remind you that these conditions must be read because it's very important. E example, this race is a restricted condition race. So it's easy for trainers and connections to program their horses for this particular race, seeing that they have an idea of majority of who they will be facing. This third race, number two, Party Princess, Terrible Mayor, who won more races than all here. Recently claimed by trainer Fremanker with earning hopes, or who knows, maybe to go to the breeding shed. Number three, Heart of a Lion, five year old who has raced only 19 times, winning two times, finishing second three times and place in third once. Uh, it shows he has multiple issues. Trainer Elliot rested uh, him and even dropping him to $250,000 after that million, half a million dollar claim, um, which he claimed from Jason Acosta, who put places off the first time in claim out the street at 550. And that was the last time we saw, see, saw this horse performing. Take him if you want, if your wish. Remember, I'm not Moses. Number four, Smarty Tradition came off a three month plus break, uh, ran twice with Tevin Foster. Claimed by Adrian Prince on the 29th of October. And before that, this horse got uh, upscale workout. Not great, but at least. Uh, got a workout before that race. Came back and didn't run anything. Came back after being claimed by Prince and got a similar workout. Let's see what will happen now. Number five, Ride of the Mob uh, claimed from April, that April race, by the tactical exotic master, Gilbert Kualwan Singh, the trainer, and raced three times. That was two and a half months after uh, he claimed he claimed I ride them up and ride them up did nothing. Here, where most are off color, as he has to uh, a chance to get in the, to get in the exotics, knowing quite thing. Number eight, smoke A should be more focused this time, and at this handicap. Plus the fact, plus it's back to um, to form. For that form, this play on last uh, out of a three month break, we are likely to see a lot of smoke in the winners' enclosure. Number eight, smoke is and a bang up for for second, third, fourth, fifth. Number five, rather the mob. Number number. Well, let me go who, who for the bang up for a second. Um, to a lesser extent, part of princess number two, and then number three out of a line. If Philip Ellis can find some ways of mean of, of getting the horse to run, number four, smart tradition, number five, ride with the mob. Chill maidens are running for one million and five hundred dollars purse money that purse money will be drastically cut at midnight December 31st when these horses when well maidens trio maidens are four year olds and up it will cut to a purse of seven hundred fifty thousand dollars well you see why a lot of trainers who are, who are trying their best to have their horse they're made to win because we only have one race meet left. Knowing 
well, you can't force what you can do. So uh, all the best to those who will achieve their goal uh, to bring their maiden as a trio. This is the fourth race, 1100 meters or, or, or five and a half furlongs, named the Ray of Hope, the 1999 two year old stakes winner. This was well, uh, a light bay on a stream by Wayne Costa. Ken declared number one, the pinning possible. She can now do better since there is first time Lasix uh, will be a fixed and a ease in the weight. Um, may even be waiting on this race. Well, most have to wait and will be waiting, but who to win is the question. The opinion could upset. Number two, the turn Magnum was well supported um, last out, but after up with the leaders flattened badly into the stretch. Got back, well, we'll be getting back the shades over her face and as Stephen Foster, if she can pr- reproduce that run on the, where am I? The 9th of October, going six and a half furlong. She has a chance, can she? I'm not sure. Number three, Cappuccini, a debutant, born the 18th of March, a bay Philip by Philip's vision out of China, China, Chinita Godaz by seeking the glory. He looks racing stables, Lawrence B. Manco, friends, they own this maiden, on Valley Estates Limited, bred, groom Michael Dyer, apprentice Shane Richardson will ride, Cappuccini will need time. Number four, answer my prior. All priors are answered, but sometimes we don't see or yet, you know, it is not answered as yet. Should get a placing on the board somewhere in the low segment. Number five, oh my, she's a small filly and racing frequently. How much can she improve? Or is it she's biding her time? Let's see. Number seven, Lion Charmer, groping to find four, well, not really consistent, this small chestnut filly, um, but capable of earning a place on the board at times, could come to the fore and get on the board. Number eight, Miss Sumpfess. Sumpfess is here, but the horse is there at Camry Spark. Look cold from, from the Salon Ring en route to the starting gates, yet got 13 to 1 odds. Hmm. Uh, you never you never know what will happen. This is Planet Camry Spark. But this horse is aptly named and it will be running just when some fest will be, will, be, will be on. The fat lady will be singing at some fest for the chill maidens. So, uh, get that out there and get it in your mind. Number nine, she's stylish, mm, could get a very low exotic slap. Number 10, Princess Amira, debuted on the 10th of December and ran fairly easy with Robert Halliday. And good enough to suggest that minimal improvement can take this race. Select number 10 to the familiar from number 7. Land Charmer, number 1, Tapinin. Number 2, Glittering Magnum, reluctantly. Number 4, Answer My Palace, surely she'll get a part of the lower part segment. Fifth race, named in honor of the 1998. Trail stakes winner. Okay, done. Trained then by Joshua Morrison. This horse was a milk gray. If you know what the milk gray is, you'd say a white horse. There's no such thing as a white horse. But anyway, seven or four long off, 1500 meters they go. Nine declared. Number one, Princess Talisi. Been fringing on the lower exotics mostly. 
Interesting, she gets first time cheek pieces. And in this very weak field, uh, a trio made must be well focused to fight even though this horse is a wire filly and raising a plenty. Uh, I think she'll be fully, fully, fully focused tomorrow. Can she win? Well, we'll see. Number three, Finey. I wonder why they named this horse Finey. Is it she's too fine? Well, that's that. But um, showed some value on in his fourth career start that was on December 6th. Uh, and this was only started racing on, the, on November 4th this season. Um, now only Mullins plus the visor is on and the blinkers is off. And that intense work on Tuesday, the 19th of December, he has to be taken very, very seriously as he only needs to improve uh, a bit to win. Listen, this horse drew pole position one in a huge chill middle field on the wrong course, the minimum wrong course, five furlongs wrong, and run okay. So, Feeny has improved overnight, and I am thinking that this horse looks good. For this number four, sweet victory. Um, Puffer is no speed, but will have the journey to relax and pounce. But how strong will that be up the stretch? Was in front of number one, Princess Talisi, by four and a half lengths last out. But chances are Princess Talisi will be more focused now. Number five, home alone. Getting first time figure eight and, and the tongue tie could be the answer, in my opinion. But um, well, all I can say, we have to give him some respect. Some res give him some respect to see if he can get out get out of the house this time around. Number six, Pitten Khan, a debutant, born the twenty fifth of April, just got called by Hedge Fund out of David Duke by Blue Pepsi Lodge. Very interesting breeding this. As a matter of fact, uh, this combination could prove good. Patrick Smelly owns the source, owns and trade the source. Monique Azan, the wife of Richard Azan, uh, bred this one. Kenneth Mullins will be the groom, apprentice. Uh, Oshadane Robinson will write. Um, and I say, well, I didn't mention, but this is a big, strong chested who has been around for a very long time, may run, okay, but the uh, distance at present, I think will be a bit too taxing. Number seven, Sugar Sugar has had many chances to show her value and hasn't really done so, but could get in the ex get on the exalt spot. Number, well, one of these for all these four will win. Number three, Finey, or Finney. Number one, Predestilifi. Number four, Sweet Victory. Number five, Home Alone. Number seven, Sugar Sugar. Tantris, named in honor of the nine, 2019 12 States Widow, Wow Wow. Trained by Gary Sabrati. It's small but compact bay horse owned by Micros, bred by Michael Bernard. Five following straight, they go, tells me the straight, 10 declared. The restricted allowance for eligible are native bred fours and up, was only won twice, and imported fours and up was only won once. Number one, Babylon will fall, get a reserve break, and it's back. Number two, Rosa the Warrior, iffy due to last display when it didn't finish the race. That was on the 15th of October, but trainer Anthony Smith is a good horseman as seen recently with Saturday's facile victory in the 10th race with, uh, with wildfire. Last three starts had long odds, 
So take a look at the board, <coughs> sorry, and see if the, those odds are shortened. Number three, I have a javelin. Was the was she fully focused last out at twenty one to one on the sixteenth of December, going six furlongs? Mm, I don't think so. Now, as well, maybe she had this race in mind because she's back reverting to her favorite course with the Javan and Patterson remaining. Number four, Jupiter Man, trained by new, new trainer Howard Bailey. I can't understand why this jockey, Matthew Bennett, ain't getting enough uh, live rides. In my opinion, he's in the top nine or ten jockeys riding, and especially on the straight, he might be the best. Jupiter Man here could get an exotic middle to lower order uh, slot at good odds. Number six, Marketplace, very small city who has issues galore. Um, but when fully fit, physically that is, she normally does well. As on the 27th of May, when all in squeak, pip, I have a javelin, Princess Sanjay and others at bay in a dramatic finish. We have Squeak, have a Javelin, and Princess Jay were unfortunately impeded. Uh, marketplace, however, is working very well. Last Saturday, when four followed in 49 and a fifth, looking very smooth. Number eight, Premier Identity, have to find more, but being fit, her chances to get a low segment of the board is possible. Number nine, Power of Fate, ran numerous times before against better horses, is trying to get his act together for this race and has speed to use to further his advantage to where it will get it. Number 11, Mozo came off as a height of last out and won convincingly. Came back a bit iffy on route to the southern, to the Wilson Crochet though. But um, looks looking okay now. Has speed alongside and in power of faith, and I don't know, maybe that could offset the source in relaxing to do well. Maybe, maybe not. Um, busy though in the mornings, which is unusual. So, this well bred cold by Savoy Stamp out of St. Cecilia, even though played with multiple issues. This court can win. I'm selecting door number three, I have a job in to upset number 10, Muslim. Number six, Marketplace. Number nine, Power of Fate, Dangerous Horse, very, very dangerous. Number two, Rosa the Warrior. Number eight, Premier Identity, or number four, Jupiter Man. Race seven, named in honor of the 1986 Two old stakes winner, Shining Hour. Trained by Kinematics, a big bay or very, very strong. And normally competes with the mighty Viceroy. Seven trails, 1400 meters or seven furlongs. Eight declared number one Tiger Amida. Kept up on the exercise track and should be well adjusted to what this is all about after five career starts. Uh, Maybe you can show some value now and get into your exotics at good odds. Maybe. Between Edgecraft, interesting if he breaks better from the gate now. Well, he has to. As he, he went, well, he went twice as fast on the back stretch against opponents that sweet victory and company last time and uh, won to the, to the awe of most. 
although he was well backed. Number four, Anominov, huge failure. I had this horse as a possible classic horse. Not that he would have won, but he, I thought he would, he would have competed and do fairly well. Uh, didn't look the part after leaving the starting gates right through the race on Multi Mile. That was on the 2nd of December when going nine and a half furlongs. He stole five to one with the Japanese born Canadian rider Fukumoto finishing 11th, second to last, by far the one length. I wonder how the statisticians how they get, get that measurement. But to be 16 length last at the furlong point mm-hmm. and at the winning post was far the one length uh, further back just a few weeks ago. I don't see the source uh, uh, overturning that form, but it's capable and if that form line at the latter part of last season to the earlier part of the season can be returned drastically, it won't be a race. Number five, Easy Peasy, was very, very unfortunate last out and will or should run good again, even though it's been raised so much time in one and a half months. Uh, I don't think it will affect Easy peasy though, and so we can expect a good run with Tevin Foster now in the hands. Number six, KD Strong, US bred Philly. Yeah, the chest in Philly by Wicked Strong out of Corp Castle by Windsor Castle. Windsor Castle often usually has some speed. This was Debbie on the 10th of December. We went four and a half furlongs and finished down the track. Fifth, ten minutes behind Channel V, Calico Gold, California Gold rather in Cookie Day and Night. Uh, Dawkins remain. The visor is on and uh, workout on December 17th when five from the 101 and 25th was looking very good, very good. Number seven, Gray Commander up in Gray uh, after beating a very weak set but should, well, or could get a low Exotic spot. Number eight, the bee's knees head on with number seven on the 19th of, no, sorry, on the November, on with number seven, Great Commander. Uh, last out, was it? No. When they met, and, and um, it's kept up with exercise by train, which was not working well. And I think the bee's knees will be more focused this time than when he met a great commander. Number six for me, the KD Strong. From number five, the the PV. Number one, Tiger Midas, an upsetter that could filter in into your exotics. Number two, Hedgecraft. Mm, let's see what he will do. Number eight, the Bees Niche. Those should be part of the top five. Race eight, naming honor of Golden Water, 2021, Trail State winner. Very small, light day filly. Anthony Nunes, former champion trainer, changed this one. Nine declared for this. Six furlongs or 1200 meters restricted allowance. Two for nearly bad children up was only one once. An imported children up who remains a maiden. Phillies and mares alone for this six furlongs event. Number one, pretty Caroline, US imported filly who yet to show her beauty. 11 times she ran. Maybe she can show that now. Metal Gritting Star took too long to get back to the races as she has issues, especially when it was a late, when, especially portraying that when it was a late on starter in October this year. Number four, City Hawk came up against an open gate show top selection in Digital Light. A Tata on that day, finishing second. Well, I had City Hawk in second position. My top two selection was Exotic Light, two wings from City Hawk. And, um, well, the Exotic paid a lot. And the open gate show was reminding you that it's Christmas time and it's a time for giving. <laughs> I'm wondering why they take this. Uh, 
the visor off in the auto. Was it by mistake? They forgot? Or, I don't know, maybe the jockey said something that they could do and they're trying that. Well, let's see what happens tomorrow. Number six, she's a mirage. First of two here for champion trainer designate, 2003 champion trainer designate Jason Da Costa. Uh, here, highly respected by the track and pool. Uh, I wonder on what grounds, unless she can perform at the drop of a hat. Oh, so I see why now. I see why. On Tuesday the 9th of, of December, worked very well, 4 from the 4th and the 5th. So maybe she's a mirage, will be coming hard, or is it a mirage? In reality, number seven, Lady Ram Delari will be trying first time to get to see if more improvement can be in for a better display in the festive season as the purse cups, which I'm reminding you a lot, will be on for January 1st, 2024. Number eight, Natural Dancer. So she's back at six furlongs. Ran up against a monster in. Chem, trained by Paul Sweeby, last out. Well ridden, though, by a jockey, British Roman. And I'm expecting that style to be on here to try to make amends. Number nine, still made of She's a Mirage, as she's my headphone. Another who is alike, still made number six, She's Mirage, uh, with similar form lines. Yes. These horses ran very close among each other when they met, when they last met. I can assure you a constant speed is expected. Uh, also a bang up finish where a closer if get in the room to go straight could take the spot. Top five, uh, number one, Pretty Caroline. Uh, could upset. I'm just taking a hunch in the festive season. From number eight, Natural Dancer. Number six, Chief the uh, Mirage. Number four, City Hawk. Even with the blinkers off. Number nine, Chief My Edgefun. Number seven, Lady Ram Delari. The penultimate race, the important race. The Jamaica Trio State Race, the Grade One event. Many good horses uh, won this race, and a really came to mind was the Viceroy in that time when he was gelded very close to that race by the great Philip Ciani. and Winston Griffith opted to ride another horse in the race, and Ian Spence took the Viceroy and won and won convincingly. Eight fillies in this race and two colts. Most fillies and mares, I must tell you, are adjusting themselves to take study at this time. But they are exceptional. Hence, others getting in heat later than others. Five of the lot that are starting here are for a champion trainer, Jason Acosta. He, sorry, five fillies, I should say. What am I saying? Yes, five, five horses. Uh, he has six entries. The other is a filly. Richard Azan has two fillies and a colt. Ian Passard has the other. Really, there are some really puzzling times. Three trainers uh, have filled the entries for the richest trail race of the season. A mile or 600 meters they go. Number one, Rosetta. Still a maiden competing with winners. Number two, come home to me. Work the fastest of the Jason Acosta uh, entries here. Battle Earth Stablemate, number seven. That's fast and serious. When breaking the maiden, at, when when come home to me, broke her maiden at four and a half furlongs. Yet 
Next time they met, Fast and Furious was way in front of come home to me. They met again in a workout on the 19th of December and come home to me one fairly easy, not by far, maybe by about two lengths or thereabout. Ray Lewis chose this one to ride and uh, the last time come home to me ran, the tongue tie was on. It was, it is off now. So let's see what round two after the encounter with Stephen made fast and sure as we, we, we have. Number four, Buttercup stretch out on the 19th of uh, November, showing good turn of foot to, to win, going away at 27 to one with seldom used jockey on his Scott beating Blue Sensation and Montemuso. Uh, not much. Placed in the fridge by Trader Van and get top jockey Kevin Foster. This filly should improve and can. And I am uh, reminding all that this horse is the only one to win going beyond six and a half furlongs, except for stable mate number eight, Matuso, who just won a mile. Uh, get to the number, sorry, number five, Matuso. Yes, get to number five, Matuso now. Big. Fast striding coat with with uh, with of good size, well bred, and looks to me to be a classical horse. However, he stopped rapidly last out, but held off um, the closer Rosetta within this race. I'm upon to think he wasn't all that fit when I saw the race or maybe wanted to look around. I don't know, maybe you'll have a, a blinker that is, a, that is adjusted in, 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 in covering. I, I don't know. Or maybe blood or something went to miss. I just have a gut feeling that this horse is going to run huge come the day. Number four, interesting times ahead. One pulling a bus against a very weak set of three old names. Um, in the mud, it's bred for, for the flat. And um, it's a useful thought to me, in my opinion. And I, I'm thinking that this horse can improve to get into the top three, four, or five. Now we get to number seven, fast and serious. Now, interesting to see how close. She will have. Uh, she would have gotten to the unbeaten stablemate, the American import Digital Light, if wasn't interrupted at at, at the furlong point. Um, interesting. Got to just the cost of that horse, number eight, Banadura. Um, very speedy. Uh, Philly, who, who will get first time Lasix after two career starts without. Not sure she will get a mile, but at this point she has to be caught and could just about get there. Uh, of note, she's the only one to get close to the talented American. Stable mate, digital light. She got within two and a half lengths after coming off a break in August 1st. That race with digital light was October 7th. Number nine, Miss Cherry, which is then auto starter, is a half sister to the once highly thought of Mojito, uh, who, uh, who is gray, Miss Cherry. Is bay superbly bred filly by sensational slam out of fifty shade of fray and uh, could get first run 
and Bandura, Bandura to fight this out. That's how I emphasize the race. Um, Trinidad and holds a very potent tree, tree prong entry here. But my top five in order, number four, Buttercup. Number nine, Miss Cherry. Number eight, Banadura. Number six, number two, number, number, is it? Number five, rather. Number two, so number six, uh, interesting times ahead. That's my top five for the prestigious two-year-old stake race for $4 million per money. Final race, the overnight 11 3 4 trails and up. Six and a half or 300 meters they go. Uh, 12 declared. It's the boxing day sprint. Before I get to the last race here, let me project to most punters and other novice, novice punters out there. Don't think trainers and jockeys know most of the winner on a race card. That's far from so. Yes, at times there are no few horses at the program on the five track in the morning or for a trainer, horses who he trains. You, know, you need to get that because, you know, a lot of people think, you know, we know everything. Moses has died quite a number of years. Number one helicopter flew well, but was taken out of the sky. Well, at least when he was safe the last time, winning very easily. I must remind you that helicopter once in the recent past campaign in overnight allowance and did fairly well. He's here, very light against a suspect field. So he could upset these. Number three, Duke was beaten by Emperor of the Cat. And number four, sorry, number six, Burlap by five and a half. And a, well, Emperor of the Cat won by five and a half length and behind for a second and third was Burlap. Burlap was five and a quarter length and behind. And what am I saying? Uh, Burlap was a length and a quarter in front of uh, this horse here. The horse there, what am I saying now? In front of number three, yes, number three, Duke. Mm. Surely, I uh, Duke can get on the board once again, as that last one showed some return to form and has one of her, one of his perfect, one of his favorite distance going at. Number five, Calico, one of three, three old here. And um, um, this horse will be tested, but uh, he's improving. Regardless, he won by three quarters of the length last out, was one in workman like style. And uh, not much speed is in, is in this race. And the jockey Radish Roman will have to try to rate this horse well. And I'm sure he's capable of doing so to off stage is all the compatriots. Number six, burn up the other trio present. Um, uh, with only a length and a quarter length in front of number three, Duke, but I'm figuring that number six, Burlap, will be more focused this time than when facing Duke on the 10th of December. Number seven, race car, uh, trying to get back to himself and um, should be able to, should surely be on the board. The exotics should come from these. Number six, Burlap. Number one, Helicopter. Number five, Captain Calico. Number three, Duke. Number seven, Race Car. I must remind you again, if Burlap, if Cal Captain Calico rather, improves on that last performance, 
you have a very good fighting chance. Happy holidays, take care, have peace, and join me next for the next race card. Thanks for those who prayed for me, for those who shown, shown concern for me. And, you know, for those who didn't care, so be it. I still pray for all. Remember to get up for the Jamaica Thoroughbred Horseman Foundation. This foundation is huger than you can ever imagine, and it will benefit all horsemen. Thanks to Chair Lady Charmaine Davis.